A new book is out. It takes a close look at a forgotten ship that was on its way from New York to South America in November of 1928. The ship's name was the SS Vestris and the book that chronicles its last voyage. It's called The Last Dance of the Vestris. Author of the book and Fresno City Council member Clint Olivier joined us now. Clint, thanks a lot for being here. Oh, my pleasure. Good morning. What brought you to the story of the SS Vestris? Well, I was taking a tour of the Queen Mary in Long Beach with mm -hmm. my family and they had this, this haunting photograph of uh, a black and white picture of people trying to get into lifeboats. And I thought, well, I want to read about that. And I went home and I went online and there's never been a book written about it before. So I thought I would write it. Oh my gosh. Yeah, simple enough. Sim well, I mean, Not once simple, I, once I got into it, I thought, yeah. oh my goodness, what have I done? But it took four years, but here it is. Awesome, congratulations. Very excited, thank you. Now, uh, we have a series of pictures okay. that uh, you provided uh, us to tell us about the, uh, the story of the, of the ship. Right. Why don't you go ahead and describe what we see? Okay, here is the SS Vestris, and this ship was built in Belfast, Ireland, and it sailed in 1912 originally, just like another ship, the Titanic. This is the captain right here of the Vestris. You'll have to get the book to find out if he went down with the ship. These are pictures here of the ship actually tipping over. And it, these photographs, this is the picture I was talking about of the people trying to get in the lifeboats. And these wow. pictures were taken by a crew member. Uh, here's a diagram from a magazine of the, t of the day that shows how the ship tipped over. And uh, some folks were lucky enough to survive. Here, are, here they are. I'm guessing one um, of those is the photographer. How else would the film have made right, it? Right, exactly. The, the photographer survived. Uh, these folks right here floated together for uh, almost a day Jeez. in the water before they were rescued. Here's the biggest hero of the wreck. And some pets made it. This, this lady here uh, saved her dog. But most people were not that lucky. Uh, it was a, an awful, awful disaster. The, the human toll, 115 were killed, but hardly any of the women and none of the children made it. So okay. it, was, it was very, very sad. It had been listing for a while, and then it finally did um, fall into the ocean. Right. But there are reports in, uh, that they, they waited way too long to send out an SOS. Is, is that the case? That's it, absolutely right. They waited too long to send out the SOS. They waited too long to uh, load the lifeboats. They waited too long to uh, do a number of things that would have saved many, many lives. But, so but it's, this it's happened when it was daylight, unlike oh yeah, the Titanic. Well, they were hit at night. There, there are a number of reasons why it went down, okay. and, and you'll find out. But um, it was hit at night, and it took overnight to fill with water and then finally capsize. Well, like you mentioned, there were survivors, and we have a sound bite from a survivor. A very early sound bite. Early right. sound bite. Frederick Sorensen. Let's check it out. Well, I'm certainly glad to be with you. About a week ago, while I was swimming around out in the Gulf Stream, I never thought I was going to be anywhere. But I got by. As luck was, I learned how to swim when I was a kid. And I've been keeping it up pretty steadily ever since. Always been kind of a nut about swimming. And uh, it came in handy this time. Of course, if I hadn't been able to, I think I would have been food for sharks. Hmm. How long was he in the water? He was, uh, he was in a lifeboat that, that capsized because of the storm, and so the lifeboat spilled everyone out, and he swam to another lifeboat, and he survived. Hmm. Um, and you can see he was grabbed. Actually, that's a, I think that's a Fox Movie Tone news, uh, newsreel mm -hmm. provided by uh, University of South Carolina, but that's Fox back in the old days. And uh, that, that video, probably, you just saw something that hasn't been seen for 90 years. Wow. So that's really neat. But they actually had to bring him into the studio, and I think he's probably reading off cards. I think they gave him, he gave him his account, and then he, they wrote it down, and then he read it off, off cards. So it's fascinating to see, the, the, especially the evolution of news. And there's a lot of, of stuff in the book about the news coverage, too. At the time, this thing was huge. It was bigger than the Titanic when it happened. Uh, the survivors were brought to New York City, and, and e even a battleship picked up some survivors. And as the battleship's pulling into port, r reporters are climbing up the side of the battleship. Oh, my oh word. My. Nowadays, <laughs> yeah, well, you can't do that. No. <laughs> but it, it's, it's all in here, and it's kind of a neat trip into the 1920s and the Jazz Age and the Prohibition. It, it's, it was a fun story to learn about and a fun story to tell. Where did your travels take you as far as research? I had people, I had uh, a friend in Stanford that went to a library uh -huh. at the school. I had a friend in New York City that went to a library there. 
I had people in England that were researching there. So my, my travels, I was able, and this is the miracle of the internet. Um, you can do journalism from home just with a cell phone and a laptop computer, thanks to the internet. I could do research all over the world. Wow. Where is this ship now? At the bottom of the Atlantic, uh, two miles down. It's never been, uh, dis dis no one has ever found it. No one has ever looked. No one's ever written a book about it. So it was forgotten until now. But it's off the coast of Virginia and uh, it, where it rests and will continue to stay. Wow. So where, where can folks buy this wonderful book? Uh, the book is available on Amazon.com. It's available on BarnesandNoble.com. And uh, it is, it's, uh, I think it's twelve ninety five, eleven ninety five, 95 mm -hmm. something like that. And uh, yeah, they ship it in a day so you can get your hands on it. It's a good read. It's a quick read. And um, it's just a, it's been an honor to tell the story. Oh, so. Great. Well, thank you for sharing it with us. Of we course. appreciate it. And again, congratulations. Thank you for Quite having me feed. on. So if you want more information about the last dance of the Vestris, including where you can buy the book, log on to KMPH.com, click news links right there on the homepage. And Clint was gracious enough to bring along two copies of the book to give away to two lucky viewers. So if you're feeling lucky, call our giveaway number right now. The number is one 888 789-2626. Again, that's 1-888-789-2626. Caller 6 and caller six and 8 will be the lucky winners. I was just going to ask, will you sign them? I will sign them. Okay, so good. call and get your book and I'll sign it before I go. Thank you very much, Clint. Thank you.